Hi guys, on this video, we're gonna talk about this 10,900 pounds profitable trade that I did on the NASDAQ. We're gonna talk about scaling into trades once again. Hopefully you've seen the 30,000 pounds tax-free profit that I did on the Dow trade, and also the 64,000 pounds profit on the DAX, which is going to be coming out soon. I'll explain what I did with that. But really, what I wanna to talk to you about is how to scale into trades and really grow that account quickly instead of going for 10 points here and 20 points there and you know the account doesn't really get anywhere okay so we're going to dive into that on this video before i do do not forget to subscribe to the channel and also give us a thumbs up guys subscribe to the channel because i've got plenty of these education videos coming out for you all right so let's look at this trade on the nasdaq now when you scale into a trade, you're doing multiple positions, okay? So for example, let's say you think the market's going to go up, you will buy it at a certain price, that will be your first position. Then as it goes in your favor, you do a second position, then a third position, and then a fourth position, and you can go on and on and on, scale it into a trade, buy more positions as it goes in your direction as you start to make a profit now you've got to make sure you've got enough margin in your trading account of course you know you're going to run out of margin if you just keep on going because every time you place a trade it eats up on margin you've got to put a deposit down um, from your account to open that trade so you've got to be sensible all right you've got to be sensible now i mean i don't particularly go full position size on the first entry okay so if you take a little look at this trade which made 10 grand it had an average size of 22 pounds per point it had nine positions in it so what's the average of that so we're talking about nine pound talk about two pound 40 per position in the nasdaq and it's a decent size mover now i was holding for a longer trade here so i was holding over several several days so you've always, I'm not a day trader in this particular scenario, so you've got to make sure you're managing risk because the markets were getting quite volatile indeed. So this was a decent size long. Now, this horizontal line gives me my, gave me my average price. That's where my average price was right here. This is the price I exited right here when we got this big sell-off candlestick right in there. Now, this is a four hour time frame, which I love. I love trading four hour time frame. We did a cracking Aussie dollar short today, just using the four hour time frame. It's a nice and slow time frame. But look, this isn't my anchor chart. I want to go up to a bigger time frame. I go up to now the daily chart. All right. So the daily chart is here. That's where I was getting, you know, a nice move. So back in here, I was getting some nice pro trading system buy signals. Momentum on the NASDAQ was up. You've got to obviously have a strategy to get in the trade, a reason why to get in. But I started to buy in here and it started to move and move and move. And it's just this area here. Look how much for a swing trade here. It's not many days. It's not many candlesticks and you can still make 10 grand in that period of time. So you go back here and you look at the four hour time frame at that particular time. You know, you, it, it just looked um, it was just a really nice move into this area here with that big red selling candlestick to get out of the trade. Now, the thing is, people ask why and how do you know when to enter position number two? And for me, it's not scientific, but there is a key point to this. Now, this is what changed my trading around 18 years ago. We trained 20 years. It took me 18 months to get anywhere near starting to make consistent profits. And as soon as I started doing this, my profits started to get better. I started making more winning trades and those trades were bigger winning trades than my usual 20 points here as a day trader. Okay. So I go for the big move. I call them blue whale trades. Now, we started to get the buy so I'm sort of buying in, you know, I can't remember the exact prices, but I'm buying in, buying in because the daily time frames turn green in my strategy. And my average is here and I'm exiting here. But what I do, I don't, I don't, you know, say, well, every 20 points it goes in my favor, I add some more. I don't do that. What I do is every time I move my stop to break even on that position, now I'm free to enter another trade. So I'm thinking about the risk all the time. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say I enter at this price here 
and my stop on this position is number one okay so this is one position there's my stop there's my entry as the price goes up it might go up 30 40 points and depending on the market you're trading the nasdaq 30 40 points is is nothing okay now once it goes up there then i move my stop to break even on this trade i cannot lose on that trade now that then frees me up to now enter another trade on a pullback so let's trade say this is trade number two there's my stop on trade number two this trade number one is riskless so it's no risk whatsoever this trade has a percentage risk whatever it wants to be let's say two percent and then let's say the bigger time frames are pushing this market higher i then now start to get into profit on position number two i then move my stop here to break even so i'm zero risk on both of these trades okay i've got no risk whatsoever terrible drawings in here but no risk whatsoever now as we progress throughout the trade because it's going to take several several days here you know i might end up having nine positions open now there's one trade i'm building at the moment i'm in it about i've scaled in i'm it's the euro dollar i'm at about 70 quid a point on this it is not 70 pounds in one position it's 70 pounds in different positions enter the different areas okay and add into the winning trades and there'll be stops at different areas now the thing is to make big money to scale into trades at times it's going to be a little bit um you, you're gonna have to manage the trade and be very focused on this because if you start entering your third position up here you'll stop underneath there's your entry here this one might stop you out okay and then these two here are still running but then you get another buy signal and you're back in again on position now it's number four you know stop to break even once you get that stop to break even now you can start to you know um, add to more trades okay now if you get the the bigger time frame right you're going to be able to get you know most of those trades in profit now not all of them end up in profit because the last trade in is the one that makes the least amount of money the first trade in number one here and let's say you're at number nine scaling in here then you know that's not going to make that much money where these one two three four probably will make some really nice money okay now it's not you're not going to do nine positions all the time that's going to be difficult to, to manage for you but you know even if you do two one two or three trades now let's say you've got a signal on a chart and you're a new trader and let's say you're going to buy this pro trend system by your stops going to be underneath this area here now when you're new to trading you haven't really got the skill or the experience to get really good entries consistently you're going to get the odd good entries but you're not going to get consistent because you just haven't had enough learning time or screen time or live trading time and what happens is because you maybe chase the market you get maybe a uh, a really bad entry because emotionally you just chased it and got in too late you get stopped out of that trade because your stop is going to be at a certain area here okay probably pretty tight to the market because you're in it full position size you've allocated 100% of your position size to this move i'm not saying 100 percent of your account but let's say you're just going to do you know three four percent on this one trade then you know you're in it with one position you've worked out your pounds per point and you're in it with one position why not drop that position let's work it out let's say you know your your position size was 10 pounds a point full position size why not why not give yourself a better chance have a wider stop and then go two pounds long then it goes in your direction another two pounds and and go through the process of moving that stop up another two pounds another two pounds because you've got to get it right straight away with that 10 pounds a point straight away otherwise you're out the trade and i reckon a lot of the time if you're new the trade will of would have made money if you were still in the trade but you've been stopped out of that trade so 
I'm not saying do this, just have a think about it, okay? Instead of just do it next time you're trading, instead of doing 10 pounds a point, split the position, say, up into two, uh, two five pounds, if you're spread betting. If you're doing funded accounts, you could do that. Get it into lot sizes, but split it up. Give yourself a chance while you're learning. Once you get enough live screen time, live trading time, you get more experience, you get better entries, and you'll get more skillful at this, and you get better at getting into these trades at the right time. While you're learning, split positions up. The reason a lot of people don't split the positions up is because the greed kicks in, and they, they see a signal, and they go in, they think they're going to make big straight away, okay? Yes, you are going to lose out on that big trade because you're going to be scaling in with smaller position sizes and building to that £10 a point. Yes, that's going to happen. But over time, it builds confidence. Confidence is winning trades. You get winning trades, you start to build confidence. We know that. So give yourself a chance with this, okay? I scale into trade. When I spot my processes, I do my weekly analysis at the weekend. I do my monthly analysis at the end of the month. I'm looking for the big moves, okay? I'm looking for trades that are gonna go using my software that are gonna go in a certain direction for a week, for a month. But let's say for a week, okay? Because people struggle with the patience to do trades for one month. But for one week, I think people can, can handle that. You know, you look at the market on a Sunday night, you, the FX market, you see where the market's going to go for this week. You can really start to build positions in these markets and the account will pop up when you get a big winning, big winning trade. Instead of doing lots and lots of little winners and lots of little losers, just be a bit more patient wait for some setups and then hit it hard aggressively by adding, adding, adding. Try it in your demo account to start with. See how well you do and how stress-free it is. Trading isn't stress-free, believe me, but by doing it like this, you give yourself a chance with your first position to get into profit. And if that first position goes against you and you lose and you get stopped out, you then haven't lost your maximum loss on that trade, okay? You can just cut it and get out of the trade if you don't like it. When it starts going in your direction, then you can start to build and build and build. Now, we'll talk about adding to losing trades. Now, that is a big no-no. We know that. But there are times when and only when I would do that is when there's a certain criteria. Now, that is for another video. We'll go into that because that is a dangerous area. Adding to losing trades, if you don't know what you're doing, is dangerous. Adding to winning trades is what you want to be doing. And you want to be spotting these big winning trades using your indicators that you are using. All right. And so for me, it's all about using those bigger time frames. The bigger time frames lead, guys. The bigger time frames lead. Okay. And then I drop down to my smaller time frames for those adding into trade. You could do this while you're working. You can use four hour time frames. Use your mobile phone if you want to. But the most important thing as well here, which I haven't mentioned, is managing your overall risk with those sh with those positions. Get that stop to break even, that trade is risk free. Get the next position stop to break even, that trade is risk free. You're, op you're opening up more opportunities to add into those trades, all right? And I think what we should do as well going forward is we should talk about turning day trades into swing trades because that is absolutely uh, a really good thing to do. So as a day trader, leaving trades on for big swing trades as well instead of going for the daily day trade, leaving it on for the big swing. All right, guys, hope it helps. Give us a thumbs up if you like it. Um, you know, 10,000 quid tax-free in a few days isn't bad at all. And that's all to do with our software scaling into trades and uh, you know managing those trades correctly hope it helps speak to you, speak to you soon